à tous de DDO, attention pour les deux comptes finales. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité, top. And we have engine start. And lift off. Décollage. Décollage, lift off from a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself. James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the universe. Punching a hole through the clouds, 20 seconds into the flight, good pitch program reported. Vehicle performance is nominal. The Ariane 5 rocket continues uh, to fly uphill in nominal fashion. The rumble of the powerful Ariane 5 now being felt here in the control center. 3D animation. We can hear the noise and feel the vibrations here. You're right, Rob. Yeah, impressive. 13 kilometers in altitude, 7 kilometers downrange, traveling uh, about uh, 0.6 kilometers per second. The trajectory reported to be nominal by Jean-Luc Voyer, the uh, range operations manager. You can see at the bottom of your screen, the yellow line is the trajectory plot, perfectly overlaid over the green line, which was the pre-launch trajectory. One minute, 41 seconds into the flight, about 40 seconds away from shutdown of the solid rocket boosters. Coming up on the two minute mark into the flight, When it detects the threshold on acceleration, the dis not the deceleration, but uh, less acceleration for the... Oh, oh, everything is okay. Everything is normal. Two and minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. When the computer detects this threshold, it will separate. Separation des EAP. Done. We have confirmation of solid rocket booster separation from Jean-Luc Voyer. This coming at an altitude of 44 miles. The Ariane 5 and James Webb traveling almost 5,000 miles an hour. We have about one minute, five seconds to go before fairing jettison. That'll be the next critical milestone. The fairing is there to avoid the satellite being exposed to high temperatures and also high air flows. And as soon as the launcher leaves the atmosphere, as is now the case, the satellite does not need anymore to be protected and, and web does not need anymore to be protected. So each kilogram being very important for the performance of the launch, we are going to eject this no more useful fairing. And let's go down to the floor uh, in the Jupiter Control Center to Raphael Chevrier of Ariane Spas. Raphael, so far so good. Hi, Rob. So far, so good. Everything is nominal, as uh, we say, when attitude and trajectory of the Ariane 5 is going perfectly well. As you can see also on the yellow line, de la coiffe. on the screen, we had the confirmation of the uh, separation of the two solid boosters and now of the fairing, meaning that we have crossed the limits of the atmosphere. So everything is going super good. And the DDO just said that all parameters are going perfectly, perfectly smoothly. So let's continue the mission. And Raphael, uh, this is a view uh, from the upper stage camera called the Vicky Cam, looking back at the James Webb Space Telescope. This is on about a 20 second delay or so because of the way the imagery is processed uh, here in the control room. There's your telescope ready to unfurl uh, its uh, wings basically and begin uh, its uh, journey to a, the Lagrange point, the L2 point about a million miles away from Earth. The trajectory is nominal. Trajectory is nominal, the report from Jean-Luc Voyer. The 
liftoff time confirmed here in the Mission Control Center at 12.20 Greenwich Mean Time, 9.20 a.m. Peru Time, 7.20 a.m. Eastern Time. The Ariane 5 and James Webb, 181 uh, kilometers in altitude, 450 kilometers downrange from the launch site here in Kourou. Flight control is very smooth. Five minutes, 12 seconds into the flight. We have about uh, three and a half minutes to go in uh, main stage or first stage uh, performance. And again, you can see at the bottom of your screen the uh, yellow uh, plot line overlaid over the green line, meaning uh, we are right on course, right down the pike, and a perfect trajectory so far for the Ariane 5 rocket. All telemetry data are now received by the Galio tracking station, which is, clo which is close to here, where we are in Kourou. It will track the launcher up to the ignition of its upper stage, and then we'll, we'll have the natal station in Brazil, Ascension, in the, as you can see on the map, in the middle of the ocean, and the two last stations in Africa, Libreville and Malindi, one on the east coast, the other one on the west coast. And the one on the west coast, Malindi, you can see that the satellite will be, the telescope will be separated more over, more or less over this Malindi station. And this Malindi station will also acquire the telemetry data from the telescope. You can see both are green, Galio and Dantal on this animation. It means they are expected to receive the, da the data, and it was confirmed right now by the launch operations manager. And just confirming now that telemetry is being processed uh, through the Brazilian tracking station. The telescope is also uh, processing telemetry through the tracking and data relay satellite system as it uh, moves further and further out into deep space. All of the telescope's uh, telemetry and its imagery ultimately will be processed through the deep space network in Goldstone, California. We pass the seven minute mark into the flight. A perfect ride to so far on the Ariane 5, we have about uh, one and a half minutes to go in the first stage performance. Once uh, the main stage uh, engine is commanded to cut off, it will be uh, jettisoned. And just a few seconds after that, the upper stage engine will, will ignite and it uh, will be the workhorse for a 16 minute burn that will put uh, James Webb into its preliminary orbit. About 11 minutes from now, uh, telescope controllers at uh, the Space Telescope Science Institute will be sending commands to prepare James Webb for the initial uh, series of commissioning activities uh, that will lead to, to the deployment of its solar array and uh, the initiation of generation of electrical power for the telescope. About 30 seconds away from main engine cutoff, Nominal trajectory continues uh, to be the watchword for the day from the range operations manager, Jean-Luc Voyer, as we stand by for main engine shutdown and separation. Extinction de l'EPC. And we have main stage shutdown and separation confirmed here in the Mission Control Center and the ignition of that upper stage. ESC. And Raphael Chevrier down uh, in the fishbowl. Uh, so far, so good. Yes, Rob, we have the confirmation of the separation of the main stage and the ignition the of the upper stage. The trajectory is perfectly nominal. This is a very important moment for us because it's always a, uh, a challenge to switch on a cryogenic engine in space condition. And we are now 
at 220 kilometers of altitude. Speed is a bit more than seven kilometers per second. As we enter now the second stage of uh, the second uh, phase uh, of uh, the flight, the upper stage is going to power for about, for about 16 minutes to place wave on its transfer orbit. And right now, everything is again nominal as the DDO just said. And a short time from now, uh, the uh, so-called sawtooth maneuver uh, will get underway. The, again, uh, like rocking a baby in a cradle, this will be a maneuver to keep Webb's optics protected from overheating loose. Exactly, Rob, like a baby in a cradle. Uh, you can see here Webb attached on top of Ariane 5 upper stage with a very specific configuration. Of course, it will be different uh, during its lifetime, but for the time being, it's, uh, it's, it's sun shield is folded and not yet Tout fully protected in the observatory. A number of uh, exhaustive studies have been performed by the mission teams in, in Europe, in the US, on the thermal conditioning inside the telescope and the way the rays of the sun would propagate and interact with sensitive equipment inside the telescope. The maintain this thermal conditioning is really key before separating this, uh, this telescope. And in particular, we know that one face of the telescope cannot face the sun. That's why the, and to produce these right thermal conditions inside the web, a specific roll low has been designed, what we call the SOTUS approach. And if you are, if you are watching carefully to these images, La you can see this animation, nominal. you can see that the upper stage is going 30 degrees on one side, then 30 degrees on the other side, going back and forth this way to to maintain this uh, perfect thermal conditioning for the, for the telescope. It's uh, worthwhile noting that uh, after Webb separates from the upper stage uh, of the Ariane 5 rocket, which continues to perform in excellent fashion at coming up on the 12 minute mark into the flight, uh, the telescope controllers uh, will be taking the baton, if you will, from the mission controllers here in Kourou. Uh, the first steps will be the opening of fuel valves, a pair of fuel valves, to start flowing fuel to Webb's onboard thrusters. Uh, they then will power on the valve drive electronics. Uh, those are powered on in preparation to control and fire those thrusters when required. Webb's solar array is scheduled to be deployed at approximately the 33-minute mark into the flight. Once it is locked in place, we'll get the call uh, that uh, electricity is flowing through the array. That call uh, will come from the mission operations manager, Carl Starr, who is at the uh, Space Telescope Science Institute at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. Uh, seated right behind him in that control room is Alicia Starr, uh, a pair of stars uh, helping to guide uh, James Webb on its discovery of the stars. Alicia Starr is the uh, lead uh, engineer for launch and ascent events. Uh, once the solar array is deployed and declared power positive, uh, then a uh, three out of the four hold downs for the aft deployed radiator will be released to prevent binding due to the cool down of the telescope's composite structure. The contamination control heaters will be enabled to protect instrument optics on web from any water ice condensation as they cool down. The actuator drive unit will be powered on. This particular mechanism helps with heater control of the fine steering mirror preventing water ice con uh, condensation later to be used uh, to position each of the mirror's segments. All six reaction wheels and the wheel drive electronics will be powered on for Webb, and that will be the precursor 